So, two weeks. I have now owned the Oculus Quest Pro. I want to go ahead and make a follow-up video. First off, to answer a lot of people's questions of what they asked me in the last one. And also, just to kind of explain my life now with, of course, this bad boy right here. The um, light blocker, which you can buy for $50 on OculusQuest.com. If you go to their accessories, you can actually scroll all the way down and actually buy this for around $50 right here. Now, I'll be honest with you. First thing I want to answer is a question that somebody asked. How is the pass-through on this? Because obviously it's a little bit different than any other Quest device. No longer is the pass-through going to be black and white. It's now going to be colorful. 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 It's all right. It's not good. It's not great. It's all right. Pretty much the best way I can explain it is that you are looking through a very cloudy vision that has colors. So, for example, if I have my TV on, you cannot see what's on TV. I looked at it through this with the TV on. It's just a static white image. If you look at your phone, Apple Watch, tablet, anything with this on, you will see a static white image if it has a light. If it doesn't, you won't see anything. With that being said, can you move around with it on? Yes. Can you see pretty well enough that, you know, you don't have to worry about bumping into anything? Yes. You do see colors. You do see HD vision. You do see those type of things. It's just certain things are absolutely absent if you do go ahead and have this on, for example, like this. And then you're walking around. You are going to see certain things, but you will see majority of things. What I kind of get at slash understand slash confused by because this is supposed to be what an AR headset but also a VR headset the AR is actually very important with this thing I've used the AR and the biggest app I've used AR wise was the paint app where you could actually walk around your bedroom and paint the walls in AR it, it, it does work well it works very well and it's very fun to use but my problem in all of that is that it just doesn't look as good as I guess I thought it was going to look. And that's what right here they're showing off the little thing where you can like kind of like, you know, paint and do all that kind of stuff in V. And this actually is in VR, not AR. But let's see if they have any images of it. you and AR doing it. Because the painting app is probably my favorite app. They do not. Okay. Not surprising. Did not really expect too much of them, you know, having too many videos of the AR because, again, most people buying this are buying this for the VR purposes. But it's supposed to be a multi-useful task device. It's supposed to not just be another, you know, Quest 1, Quest 2, which, again, is completely separate from, these device, from this device. This is supposed to be a more professional, unique, crazy type device. And, again, like I said, overall-wise, I would say... It meets my needs for the most part, but it's not like if you're buying this. When I first bought this, right, I thought this thing was going to be absolutely outside of this world crazy. And recently, I actually tried out the PS5 VR2. That right there was crazy to me. That was absolutely amazing. And that was that next level experience I thought I was going to get from this. Now, the PSVR. Um, the brand new one is $500 off Sony's website, but you also have to own a PS5 to get it, right? So that's $1,000, which is actually pretty comparable to this bad boy right here. They're both $1,000. Difference is you can obviously play Xbox, I'm sorry, play PS5 plus VR plus other things. It's still getting there. The PSVR doesn't have as many games as this does. So it's like a, it's a trade-offs, right? And also with the PSVR, you're going to be tethered. While this is untethered, you can walk around anywhere with this one. Although you probably shouldn't without hurting yourself if you try to do that. Now for gaming, this has been absolutely a delight. I haven't had any issue with VR gaming. Other than the fact, you guys saw my video before. This right here, the... Full lens cover, or sorry, full uh, light blocker is still god awful. If you have glasses, if you don't have glasses, it's absolutely perfect. I'm gonna tell you right now. If you don't have glasses, when I take my glasses off, this lens blocker is. I'm sorry, this um, light cover. I call it lens blocker because it actually messes up my glasses. 
Um, if you have glasses, this light cover works so good, perfectly fine, every single time, you're not going to have problems at all. But if you do not have, if you do have glasses, I'm going to tell you right now, this might not be the headset for you. And it's weird to say that because I said this before, I'll say it again. When I had glasses on without the lens blocker, without this right here with the old thing that comes in the box, which doesn't block off the light, but blocks off majority of the light. A lot of light is still in the can or it is in, you know, my field of vision when I'm using it, which kind of does suck. But it's the most comfortable headset I've ever used with glasses on. It's just this lens, this uh this uh light cover, it pushes your glasses inward and then like pulls them off your head every time you move your head. It's so annoying. And again, like I said, I know it's such a small, you know, nitpick thing, but again, this won't Majority of people won't worry about this, but if you wear glasses, you're going to have that problem. If you are wearing glasses, I recommend buying prescription lenses for this so you can avoid that problem completely. It saves you so much time, so much hassle just having prescription lenses, right? Nonetheless, though, like I said before, what would I rate this out of 10 after two weeks of owning it? I would probably say, and keep in mind, I did come from a Quest 1, a Quest 2, a Rift S. I've had them all. I'm going to give this an 8 out of 10. I think it's a really solid device and a really solid VR AR headset. Um, but for the price tag of $1,000, it's more realistic. When it first released, it was $1,500. $1,500, no way in heck this is worth $1,500. For $1,000, I would say go with the Quest 2. That's kind of how I'm leaning toward. While, again, like I said, it is a great device when you use a device like the um, PS uh, VR 2, and you realize that that device has an OLED panel in there, you kind of wish you had the PS VR versus this device. But again, like I said, there are trade-offs, there are plus and minuses. The mobility of this is absolutely amazing, which I'll tell you right now though, the whole motion tracking of your hands, that does not work for me. I don't know what I'm doing wrong, but you're supposed to be able to put your controllers down at each, either of your sides and then you can motion track with your hands and kind of move around. It worked three times for me. And every single time I do it outside of that or since then, it has not worked and it always glitches and it never, I'm never able to do it. Again, like I said, maybe I'm doing something wrong. I looked up tutorials on how to do it correctly. I'm doing exactly what the tutorials show me. And yet it still has problems left and right. And I still don't understand how I'm not able to do it. Now, where does this thing win? Why does it get an 8? Is still, till this day, I will say this, it is a very comfortable headset to own. I know a lot of people have had problems with this right here on the forehead, creating a forehead, burning the forehead, causing uncomfortness. In my opinion, when this is on my forehead, it's very comfortable. I have no problems at all. I have no burning sensation. I have no uncomfortability. It's very comfortable. And honestly, it's, very, it's a very fun device to own. If this device was less money, I would say absolutely this over the Quest 2. If the Quest 2 and this price and this was the same price, this would be 100% over the Quest 2. And the reason why is because the Quest 2 is top heavy, while this is very balanced across the board. The Quest 2 has a strap on the back here. This actually has an actual, you know, fully built frame. I like it. The quality of the like the build quality of this is amazing. My only problem slash you know issue with it is going to be simply, number one, again, like I said, the pass-through is not the greatest. This light blocker, not the greatest. I know I could just go back to the other one, but I spent $50 on this light blocker. I'm going to use the light blocker. And then, of course, it's just the price tag. That's really my three major issues with this device. After two weeks of owning it, I still use it every single day. It's still my main VR Go, my, my main VR headset. I do own a Quest 2 still, but I use this over the Quest 2 every single day. And because, again, like I said, there's certain things I do like about it. When you're in the menu system, instead of seeing like a gray back, uh, background around your apps, you see actual colors and lights. And I like that. Again, like I said, it's not a bad device. It's just, ha it's just not perfect, right? And when you spent as much money on this as you did, it's hard to justify it not being perfect, right? I mean, $1,000 is a lot to spend on a VR headset when it comes to an untitled headset. When it comes to the Rift S, I know that was up there in price tags, and other headsets were also up there in price tags. 
but you know, you expect perfection in all honesty when it comes to these expensive VR headsets. And when you don't get it, it is quite disappointing. But guys, tell me down below your thoughts and opinions. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.